What's up, player? What up, dad? <laughs> What's what up, people? Up? How you doing? Uh, welcome to our first episode of Like Father, Like Son Sports. This is a, a podcast where we're going to celebrate the timeless bond of family through the love of sports. So join me and my boy, Tyler Sims, dive into the thrilling world of athletics, sharing stories, insights, experiences from both my point of view and his perspective. Whether it's reminiscing about legendary games, discussing the latest sports news, or exploring how sports shapes our lives, we aim to inspire and entertain. So grab your favorite snack, settle in, and let's kick off an exciting journey through the heart of sports and family. Woo! <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good, Dad. I'm good. How, good. How are you doing? Good. I'm great, man. And I am super excited to be doing this podcast with you. Remember? As am I. Nervous. Yep. Definitely nervous, but My man, it's nervous. okay to be. Yeah, I've, I've done quite a few of these, so it's okay to be nervous, man. Uh, but we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have we fun. Are. Yeah, yeah. So, like father, like son, sports. Uh, so we both sort of, you know, put our heads together. I mean, I, I felt like I wanted to do a podcast with my son, uh, and and you come off as speaking very well and, and and knowledgeable about sports you know considering growing up you didn't play a whole lot of sports you're no. very knowledgeable and i respect that about you Thank and so you. yeah i wanted to you know get get with you and do a podcast man what, what, what made you say yes when i actually do a podcast um well, I like the idea. I've had like friends propose it before. It's just never something we've uh, settled down and decided to do. Uh -uh. But also, it just gives us something to do to get closer, you know? That's my thinking. That's my yeah. thinking exactly, man. You know, whatever I can do to, to, to grow that bond with you, you know, I want to do. Exactly. Me as well. Yeah. And, and this is a a good step in, in that direction, man. Mm -hmm. Um, so if people don't know, like I'm in Houston and you are where I'm in Wichita, Wichita, Kansas. That's what people know, but where are you really? What are you in uh Hayesville or are oh, you? In yeah, I, I guess <laughs> I'm in Hayesville. <laughs> I, I reckon you're right. Yeah, so when people ask me where you stay, I say Wichita too. Yeah. Yeah, I say Wichita because that's what they'll know. And, and Hazel is right there. So it's just like Wichita, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh, so let's get into some sports, my dude. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, you know, I thought about it, man, and, and the Olympics has been over for a couple of days, man. But I really thought there was still some headlines out there that we can get into. All right. You know, we'll, so we'll go over. Uh, these things, you know, get your perspective, my perspective, you know what I'm saying? And, and we'll just keep it moving from there and see where we end up, man. Okay. All right. Uh, first thing, uh, Simone Biles and the gymnastics team. And what are your thoughts on that, on that, babe? Um, I'm not going to lie. Not big into gymnastics. <laughs> Not very big. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had yeah, some yeah. friends that that played it, uh -huh. um, or that did it when I was younger. Yep. Um, and I know that at least I I figure that the U.S. is pretty good at it. We always yeah. Do it. yeah yeah yeah. Um, so my opinion is in the. Uh, so this, <laughs> let me ask you this, because. When I when when I first started watching the Olympics, there was nothing on but the gymnastics. So it's like right. I had to sort of pay attention. Right. So I, I just like Olympics. Did did you did you say oh it's gymnastics? Let me turn it off until there's a basketball game on or something. No, I just said oh it's gymnastics. I don't care to watch. Okay. Okay. Well, let me let me talk then since 
Simone Biles is from Houston. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I did not. Yeah, Simone Biles is from Houston. And okay. I've seen her here in person. Oh, you have? Yeah, I saw her at a, a restaurant. I won't say the name of it unless they pay me. But <laughs> I did see her at a restaurant with her husband, Jonathan Owens. You know, he okay. was a former Texan. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was very interesting because I was with one of my coworkers who's a female and she was the biggest Simone Biles fan. She, she was, was freaking. Crazy. She was freaking out. Yeah, she was going super crazy. <laughs> but me and a, a, another guy that I was with, we we kept her from going over there, interrupting their dinner. You know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we did see her. I think she took a picture from far away. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that was a, a pretty cool. You know, seeing a, a gymnast holding hands with the NFL safety. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, back to the Olympics, man, she, uh, Simone Biles wrecked shop. Yeah, way. I do. I do know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. She uh, has won the, the most medals for a, a gymnast, male or female, ever, mm. you know, and uh, she had this, this necklace on that, that, and this is when I knew she, she, she knew she was the shit. When she had a necklace on that had a goat on it. Mm. Yeah. 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 So she was like, yeah, yeah, I have this to remind me how good I am. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, go ahead, Simone. You know, yeah, go like ahead. That. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, but coming from the Tokyo Olympics, well, she 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 left early. She, she struggled. She still got the team medal. She may have medaled in one other individual event, but she mm -hmm. left uh one of the other events and she 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 uh, multiple events because of uh what she called the, the twisties you know she didn't feel safe uh competing in that event because being in the air she didn't know where she was mm. yeah she thought she so the Tokyo Olympics for her was a was a, a down moment you know and, and she didn't know if she would even do the Paris Olympics, but yeah. you know, through family, through prayer, through uh, uh, you know, uh, a therapist. I, I think she got her mind back right. Mm -hmm. She won the worlds, and she was back in, in, in at the Olympics in Paris, man. And, and shout outs to, to Simone that she did great. Uh, another one that another uh, news item that just popped up regarding. Uh, the gymnastics team was uh, Jordan Child. I don't know if you remember hearing this. Is that your house or mine? <laughs> do you hear that? Yes. Oh, no. There's nothing <laughs> I can do about that. It's a cat. Yeah, yeah. My cat's been around here, too. Yeah. We're a cat family. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jordan Childs, man. Uh, she originally got fifth place in her in one event and her team challenged it because they they thought that the uh level of difficulty wasn't high enough that the judges gave her and the judges mm -hmm. agreed so they increased the level of difficulty which increased her her score and she actually bumped from fifth to third place and now uh, uh the, the people that lost, uh, I forgot what country they were from. They're trying to say that they didn't get the, they didn't actually uh, shoot. They were supposed to have a time limit on how quickly they could get that challenge in. And they were saying they didn't get it in on time. So they're trying to strip her of her bronze medal. That's doing mm. Yep, 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 yep. So, you know, we, we, we still follow that one, you know, yeah. for that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I sort of enjoyed the Olympics, man. Uh, the the the, the uh, uh, gymnastics after you know watching it and learn. I don't know how to score, but other than that, you know, it, it seemed pretty interesting. Now, uh, maybe a sport that you did pay attention to. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. More. Is basketball, man? Uh, there's a lot going on with this team. Uh, we we've won the gold medal. Uh, when did we last not win the gold medal? In 04, was it? 
I believe it was 04. Um, so we won uh, the gold medal consistently, man. Was there any doubt in your mind that we would not win the gold medal? I kind of always go in expecting us to, even mm -hmm. though we we clearly don't always. But, um, yeah, there is doubt. But at the same time, we're the best at basketball. So, like, I'm yeah. always fighting on whether I should – Doubt the team or not, pretty much. Right, right. Yeah. And for the record, I, I I thought we would win, but the, how the team was constructed. What did you mm -hmm. think about that? Mm -hmm. What do, What do you mean? Elaborate, elaborate. Yeah. So, uh, they all weren't superstars, and there mm -hmm. was some there was some obvious superstars left off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kyrie was left off. Uh, Jalen Brown was left off. Yeah, so, and 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 Derek White was on. Who you know, more power to him. What's wrong with Derek White? He's not Jalen Brown. Okay, and uh, and also Drew Holiday. What's wrong with Drew Holiday? More I power mean, to him, but he's not Kyrie. No, he's that's all I'm saying. Coach. So, what, what coach. Are your, what's your thoughts, man? I, obviously, you got big time thoughts. What are they? Well, I just – it seems to me just now you – you seem to just be upset at the amount of Celtics players that were on the U.S. Olympics team. I grew up a Celtics fan. It's not yeah. about the Celtics. I love it. It didn't sound like you loved it. These are phenomenal <laughs> players um, that play the game really well. And maybe when you're building a team for the Olympics uh -huh. basketball team, uh -huh. maybe it's less about – the amount of superstars you can get on the team and uh, maybe the amount of, like, compatibility you can get, you know, with yeah. players being able to work with one another, you know. And I agree. Like, that's, like, their whole life. you think everybody would be good at it, but, I mean, not every, every person is different, you know. So are you saying that uh, Jalen Brown would not have fit well on this no, team? No, I think he would have because he would have yeah. had three teammates there, but that's okay. Well, no, because if they'd have chosen Jalen Brown, they probably would not have chosen Derek White. Well, yeah, then he would have had or, two. I'm saying, yeah, like, or he got familiarity. Well, was, Drew, they, no, they had what three, so they would have had three anyway. Mm -hmm. But they, yeah. But my whole point is, uh, Jalen Brown, uh, like I, I don't know. Like this is another. Isaiah Thomas in the 92 team situation. I don't know. Is, did, did he piss off LeBron James or something? <laughs> did I don't LeBron know. say, I do not want to play with that man? You, you know, think like Kyrie would have wanted to be on the team? I think Kyrie uh, probably didn't give a damn. I'm sorry? He should have been. I think Kyrie probably didn't give a damn. Yeah, I don't think but he I, I think wanted he, to be on the team. He deserved to be on the team for sure. That's fair. But, he he has got to understand that he is a catalyst for you know people to to come at people that are, are with mm -hmm. him. You know, like mm -hmm. like Kyrie says what he feels and it, it, it has no filter. And sometimes you have to have a filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I I love his game. But I didn't see Jalen Brown being that type of dude. I don't know mm -hmm. why he wasn't on the team. Mm -hmm. And you know he could have easily, you know, because in the past players said no. I, I want all this. I want to rest. I want to break. I don't want to do the Olympics, mm -hmm. right? But he got on Twitter like saying like, really, like you picked this guy over me type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. like he really. It felt like he wanted to be on the team. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't always work out that way. Doesn't always work out that way. You right about that, my brother. <laughs> what do you think about Wimby and his performances? Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't watch the last game. The, the last game, right, was was fine. I don't even think he. He didn't, you know, like they lost and he did fine. But I think he was really 
dominant against other teams not named the USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he was just fine against us. Uh, but against other teams, he was really dominant. And and he did he did some really good things against us, though. He, you know, he was switching threes and, you know, uh, alley oops. He did some fine things, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't dominant. But uh, he gonna be he won to watch man. The boy has got mad skills and big hands. And I, I don't know if you saw this. They should have a steal. There's some photographer missed a, a great opportunity because mm-hmm. at the end of the game, after it was over, uh, Kevin Durant, who's seven foot, went to Wimby and they hugged and Wimby was talking to him. And Wimby was a good six inches taller than Kevin Durant. I mean, people understand that you know it by looking at the height, but you don't know until you see them like side by side. You're like, this yeah. is that much taller than Kevin Durant, who's <laughs> six eleven himself. I'm like, God, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. So I'm like, that was that picture looked crazy to me, you know. But I, I didn't see any photographer take a picture of it. I just saw the the video, you know. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, um, I didn't want to remain completely in the dark about uh, how he did over the Olympics, so I just uh, gave a little overview of his performance in each game. Yeah. And it does seem like he was quite a domineering force on his team. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm seeing. Uh, oh, maybe not there. Yeah, I. Uh, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the Olympics uh, that much this year. Okay, lot, well, so. that that that's wild because we got like three more topics on them. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. I know some things, and I have some things written down over here. But um. okay, all right. So this is something else that I'm. Re- I've really never been interesting interested in. Mm-hmm. But at these Olympics, it was very, very interesting. Okay, swimming, swimming, swimming. man. Yeah, are we like, also was- quite good at swimming? You, you're, you're good at swimming. No, I'm saying, aren't we also good at swimming like we as in U.S.? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, breaking records and stuff. I think mm-hmm. uh, Le Mans, the French swimmer, he was swimming in, in front of his home crowd. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, and he, I think he may have been the world champion. That's why he was, like, picked the favorite in all the events that he was in. But he was – he was okay. lapping the field like you could like you would look at the video and see nobody but him, you know, in the frame. That's how good he was. And uh mm. he won every event he was in, he won his gold medal, his gold medals. But uh uh we had uh, a lot of uh US swimmers that, that did well as well. Uh I won't uh you know try and Say all their names, cause. <laughs> but they they we had some swimmers that did well in it, man, and I, and I did enjoy the swimming part of, of the Olympics, man. What well, didn't they do a like a river race? I didn't see it. They may have, but I'm I didn't pretty sure. Did they, did they show it on TV? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a big talking point leading up to the Olympics was that okay. this river that they were going to swim in, they wanted to make sure it was clean. Yeah, I do, I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw like three swimmers had gotten like super sick after the race. <laughs> Damn, like uh, COVID sick or like something in the water sick? Like something in the water sick. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, man. That, <laughs> yeah. With with uh natural bodies of water, you never know what you're gonna get. Yeah, for real. Yep. So mm-hmm. now let's talk about a sport that I've uh grown to love uh the last six, seven years maybe. Uh and it's because 
my niece, your your first cousin, mm -hmm. has been playing it at a pretty high level mm -hmm. for the last six, seven years. And that's volleyball. Oh. And my niece is not on the, the U.S. Olympic team, guys. She no. could be. I'll give you that. I, I believe she could be for sure. But uh, I've just become interesting, interested in volleyball, just watching her and following her journey. Uh, volleyball team, they did really well. Uh, and they lost in the championship game. I rooting for them. I thought they could win the goal, but uh, in the end, they lost in the championship game and they won the silver medal. They did. Yeah. Now, the big talking point here is one of Ajani's Kentucky teammates, Avery Skinner, was on the uh, volleyball team. Okay. That's Ajani's best friend, Avery. Damn. Yep. They, they go out of the country together and do all sorts of neat things. But Avery, Avery is one heck of a volleyball player. She was on the uh, – her her as well as the Johnny was on the U.K. team that won the national title back in 2020. Okay. Then, uh, Avery's last year, she uh, transferred to Baylor, and, and she played one year at Baylor. Uh, but, yeah, she made the Olympic team, and she was uh, a dominant force on the Olympic team in uh, leading them to a silver medal. So – Mm. Congratulations, Avery. Uh, way to yes, get it yes. done to all ladies. Yeah, yeah, that, that was awesome to, to witness. Uh, so I, I met, let's go uh, now back up to basketball. Let's talk about uh, women's basketball. Now, do you follow women's basketball in general? Mm, not really. A little here and there. Okay. But not a lot of it, no. And that's okay because most – no, I'm trying to say more. So before this year, there was a lot of people that would say, no, I don't watch WNBA. Yeah. But this year – Yeah, this year. Uh, there's been a lot of eyes on women's basketball. Mm -hmm. And in no small part to who? Who you think I'm about to say? Kaylin Clark. Caitlin Clark, yeah, no small spot to Caitlin Clark, yeah, and uh, to a, another extent, Angel Reese, yes, yeah. I think both of those ladies have elevated the game tremendously. Uh, I think uh, South Carolina's dominance in, in women's basketball over the last four or five years has elevated the game. Uh, Dawn Staley, as a coach, has elevated the game. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, women's basketball, it's it's more enjoyable for me now. Mm -hmm. And I've all and I love basketball, so I could watch pickup basketball on TV and be fine. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how much I love it. But uh, I didn't always feel that way about the WNBA, just because uh, you know. But when you get legit stars. It makes a difference. It makes a difference, man. It does. Yeah. It's being proven. Yeah. And so my big take with the women's uh, Olympic basketball team is why couldn't they find room for Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese? It's just two extra jerseys, man. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your thoughts? Um... I mean, again, did they want to be on the Olympic basketball team? I don't think they would have turned it down if they were asked. I struggle to I struggle to believe that they didn't ask at least one of them. They did not. They didn't. It's like no, set not. in stone that they did not ask them. Yes, yes, because because I uh, remember I, I remember reading. Uh, Reporters ask those questions, and uh, the coach and, and, and maybe uh, the person over the, the construction of the team, they felt like they, they, they didn't want uh, – they didn't have to ask her. I don't think they, they really 
disparaged Caitlyn, but they didn't ask her. So what do you think about not asking Caitlyn or Angel to be a part of the team? Mm. I don't know. It just it, give a, it, give a strong take, man. Just I don't have a strong take. It. I don't let have a strong it. take. I don't. Here's my take. Let's hear yours. Maybe I, maybe I'll get some up after yours. So let's hear. It. I think they were wrong. Uh, yeah. I think that that Caitlyn. So in the beginning, I think if they were doing it right now, they would ask her. Because yeah. I feel like she's proven herself now, and a, a lot more of the girls in the WNBA respect her and respect her game now. When she first got into the WNBA, they were hating on her and and saying, even though she she making everybody more money, she got more eyes on the TVs. You know, it was a bunch of Caitlin Clark bullying going on, and I think when they picked the team. Some of that residue fed over into mm. the team. They didn't. They didn't want that. Mm. And some of the older, some of the older players may have not wanted her on the team. I, I didn't get that from anybody. But you know, they may have thought, "Oh no, let her wait her turn," right? But I think now, Kayla Clark been balling the second half of the WNBA season or the middle of it or whatever. I feel like. She should be on the team. Angel Reese, they're clearly two of the best players in the WNBA. Yes. If you can put Diana Taurasi on this team, who already had five gold medals, right? She's been in five Olympics before Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like, when is it enough? Is, is three enough? Four enough? Five not enough? Really? Like mm -hmm. there's nobody else that that can help us win gold but Diana Taurasi. Like, what are we trying to do here? Yeah. Yeah. So now these ladies who have proven that they're two of the top ladies in the WNBA got to wait a whole four years to do this again? Mm hmm To be clearly on, on the team in four years? So now they won't even have an opportunity to win six because they ain't playing 24 years. You know? Mm -hmm. That that was my issue. Yeah. Uh, you got multiple women on this. You had some newbies, which I, which I was happy to see, and those newbies performed well. But you had a lot of older women that could have easily bowed out, uh, let these new this new generation take it. And mm -hmm. You can't tell me, well, they might not be, they might not win. They might, they might make make us get silver. Before before you women, you pro women were, were playing, the, the college women were still winning gold medals. You know, and not only that, but I don't know if you remember, but I but this summer, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese was on a team that played against the Olympic team mm. before the Olympics started, like pre olympics Okay. They beat the dog out right of And right during that game, I said, oh, Lord. I said, we went for a long Olympics to the, the women, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't take into context that the women's side uh, globally is not nearly as strong as the men. Our yeah. women have been dominating for years, way more so than the men. Mm. So I should have took that into consideration and been like, well, no, they, they their competition is great. They, they'll probably still win gold. Yeah. But it's, go, it's going to be tough. Yeah. And what happened in the gold medal game? Did you watch the gold medal game? No. We won by one point. And, and we played the, like the men, our U.S. men played the French, French men in the gold medal game. Our women played the French women in the gold okay. game. Okay. Yeah. So they went, they me in there with they silver medals on, or me in there with they gold medals on, cheering them on, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we was up by like eight, something like that. The last minute, them girls, them French girls went off. Mm. One particular girl went off. I can't remember her name, but uh, uh, they got it to, to within three with like four seconds left. They, uh, they pushed it up the court. 
uh, it, it was a fast break, like uh, in a situation where the defense usually will leave a three point shooter alone. Yeah. But their best shooter, the one who she had made like six straight points or whatever, she had a toe on the line. She shot the shot at the buzzer and it went in. But it was a two, not a three, so they, they lost by one. Damn. But it was it was a it was a real good game, but that's just how close it was. Yeah. I mean, I, but I also feel like like Kevin Durant ain't gotta win four four medals. Like we got pl- plenty of guys on the men's team. I don't know how many, but plenty that's won multiple uh medals. And you know, I, I feel like you know, I feel like they should they should set they should set uh, a rule saying you can only be in like two Olympics. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you know, no more than that. Because why do you need to be in three Olympics? That's twelve years <laughs> worth of Olympics, right? That's a twelve yeah. year. You don't yeah. need to be in. The, and if you do it like. It's really eight years. Three Olympics is eight years. One Olympics, four years is another Olympics. Four years is another. That's eight years, right? So I, I might give you three Olympics, but you don't need to be in four. Yeah. You don't need no more than three Olympics. You get what I'm saying? That's a lot of time. Yeah. Let other brothers. You, you, you're, you're telling me that we're not developing talent. Like nobody else. Like, like, uh, uh, what's your boy name from uh Minnesota? The the guard. What did you say? What's the uh, the guard from Minnesota that was on the team? Uh, his face is, but his, his name is, 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 is moving away from me. But you're telling me he's the only uh, young guy that can be on the damn team? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't believe that. And, and you know, surely uh, it, it's political though. It's it's mm-hmm. always been political. It will always be political. You know, like Christian Leitner can make the 92 team, but uh, <laughs> Jalen Brown can't make it in 20. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Come on. Give me a break, man. You know, I think uh, the 1992 team, I feel like uh, like uh, Detroit's uh, head coach, he, he – he, he, he uh, shiced it. Uh, 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 he shiced it. Uh, man, why can't I think right now? <laughs> Isaiah Isaiah Thomas, because I feel like mm. he should have said, "No, we're gonna put Isaiah on this team, Jordan, and you guys are gonna get along." And I don't think Jordan would have backed out because everybody else was on the team already. So now, mm-hmm. it's like, they got everybody. If Jordan back out, it'll be like like he's the he's the bad guy, and we just still crushed everybody if Jordan wasn't on that team. But uh, you know, that that's my take on that. So mm-hmm. uh, no Caitlin, no Angel. Uh, the Americans still. Won the gold medal, but uh, I, I I cry foul. That was foul, man. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, let's get into track and field. Track and field. Noah Lyles. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts, my my dude? Um. Well, I don't know how many events he participated in. But the one in particular that I'm thinking about, the fastest 100 meter dash mm-hmm. in history. Yeah, man. You can yeah, quote me man. on that. Yep, yep. Um, I thought that was pretty crazy. He won by what, like? Photo like, finish. Photo finish it was by like a five hundredths of a second or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it was crazy. Those men are fast. That is yeah. crazy. And just think, like, they weren't like that in high school. Like, you really – you grow and you build muscle and you train 
and you get your technique down to such a level, man, I don't know what he was running in high school, but it probably was like a full second less. He might have been running like a 10-7, a 10-8. No, that boy ran like a 9-7. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. I ran like a 12 in high school, so I probably... I probably I could run, tell you what mine. Probably could run an eleven if I really train. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably was faster than that in high school, but mm. uh, not by much. Oh uh, yeah, so no allows, man. Uh, so real a, a quick fun tidbit. So my sister, uh, my my older sister, I don't you don't know her, Angie. Uh, Went to the Olympics, uh, and she was at the same hotel that Noah Lyles' mom was at. Yeah, and they, and they took mm. it together, and she sent it to me. Yeah, so my sister went to the Olympics. Uh, she did a, a lot of different events. She sent pictures of all the different tennis and basketball and swimming and volleyball, and what I came away with was that all those stadiums were like lights out, man. Like those are some really nice stadiums, like bad, like 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 cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I felt like yeah, that experience was off the chain, man. And yeah, she said it, it was a lifetime experience, and and her and uh, her husband went and they had a great time, man. So shout out to my sister Angie. Uh. Yeah, no allows, man. Uh, so you talked about the 100, so let me talk about the 200. <laughs> so, uh, and I guess, like, so no allows came in third in the 200. He was, you know, everybody thought he would win it. He got third. But I sort of knew he wouldn't win it when he came in second in the semis. Mm-hmm. Like the, the the guy that beat him was 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 rolling. It wasn't like he bare, you know what I'm saying? Like he got second in the semis, and everybody expecting you you blow through your all your heats mm -hmm. on the way to the final, right? But he 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 did test positive for COVID, and uh, as you know, COVID it can really do a number on your lungs, your yeah, breathing. Yeah, yeah. so. If you're a if you're a a top runner who uh, leans on your lung capacity and your breath and 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 all that to perform well, yeah, COVID will take you out, man. And, uh, and he wore a mask and everything, and you know he ended up finishing third. Which to have COVID and finish third, I think the brother needs to be applauded. I really do because mm -hmm. could have easily uh, finished less than that. Yeah. Just thought, yeah, based off of uh, his breathing capacity, you know. And because uh, I know some people were, were saying that that he didn't really have it or that was an excuse or whatever. Yeah, but it was documented that he was te he tested positive for it, and, and and so you know he had to take those necessary precautions. You know, some people might have even uh, bowed out. And he, he didn't bow out. So I applaud him for not bowing out as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so those were some of the highlights from uh, the Olympics. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, leave them in the comments for us. Uh, like the video. Comment on the video. Me and my son, we doing it uh we we trying to uh grow our bond you mm -hmm. know sports uh through social media through through this video i'm in houston he's in kansas and kansas. yeah we're uh talking sports and having a good time uh so what, what you brought this to my attention uh what what, what do you want to uh talk about Ty? nfl injuries Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, what's going on? Um, the first one 
And the most recent one in my brain is, of course, J.J. McCarthy and his torn meniscus. Um, J.J. McCarthy. McCarthy. What was happened to be a phenomenal preseason game. So J.J. McCarthy is the rookie Rookie quarterback quarterback from from University of Michigan, right? Mm -hmm. Who does he play for now? He's playing for the Vikings. The Vikings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they they got that turf Mm -hmm. at home. But, yeah, they got that turf field. Okay, and so he he tore his meniscus? Yes, and he's going to have to undergo surgery. No, I'm not – I don't think a meniscus is as bad. That's not – that's not terrible, right? You probably have one. Or MCL. Yeah, I've heard of uh, being out six weeks with a meniscus or four weeks or whatever. Depending on how bad the tear is, right? Yeah. They did say he required surgery? Yeah, he's getting surgery for it. Yeah, there was no – did did they have a timetable for his return? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, man, I was – I was surprised to see how well he did in that preseason game. Yeah, you know, I mean, he was not. Uh, he was not one of the rookie quarterbacks I was all that high on. You could say, I right? He was, I wasn't high on any of. I wasn't even that high on Caleb Williams, and he did pretty decent in his mm-hmm. first. Game. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, any other injuries? Um. Another recent one that comes to mind is uh, Chiefs wide receiver um, Holly. Wait, Hollywood yeah, Brown. Hollywood Brown. Mm-hmm. With a sternoclavicular injury, uh, looking to That's, be out up to six weeks. Like he, that sounds like he he uh, he was in a car accident. <laughs> It does sound so, like he'd be in a car so, accident. So he hurt his sternum and his clavicle? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Does he require surgery? Um, I, I don't know if it's surgery or just, you know, not playing. It said that he's going to miss uh, about up to six weeks. Oh, okay. Out. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, 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 if anything has been proven over time, is that uh, <laughs> uh, Kansas City's uh, quarterback, Pay, uh, Patrick Mahomes, can make anybody any receiver a start? He doesn't yeah. need. Yeah, he don't. He don't need uh, Hollywood Brown. I'll take it. I am a certified Kansas City Chiefs hater. Yeah, yeah and yeah. anything that can happen to make that team lose games, I'm here for. I of course. I hope you get well soon, dude. I don't want you to – I don't actively want you to be injured. Yeah. But um, I will rejoice when I find out that you are injured because yeah. that means – Until – Until uh, for, until Patrick Mahomes lights up Cleveland's defense with, without him. <laughs> no, I don't see that happening. Um, I feel you, man. I feel you, man. I feel you. <laughs> no. Hey, show, him, show him your hoodie, man. Yeah. So everybody your hoodie, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. who got you that hoodie, baby? Actually, I don't remember. <laughs> That's not the one I got you? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, <laughs> is that the one with your name on the back? Yeah. Hey, let me see. I never saw the name on the back, man. Show All right. Name on the back, man. Can you see it? Yeah, baby. Miles Garrett jersey. With with uh, the Bissell name on it, you got oh, Bissell. Special you know, name. I should, so did you, so? Did, would you rather have Sims on it or Bissell? Fine. Yeah, Sims probably would have probably would have been better because yeah, like I was thinking you were, but it's okay. <laughs> Bissell still no, works. It, Jackson would have been fine. I'd have sent you that thing with Jackson on it. That's that'd have been fine too. It. Yeah, yeah, that's what I should have did. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, uh, so how are your Cleveland Browns looking, man? I mean, I haven't. I've again, I've been slacking this yeah. preseason. Usually, I'm on top of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And not this time around. Despite being pretty interested, uh, 
and a couple different players going into the season. But um, as far as how we've been doing, I haven't seen anything big or crazy or heard anything big or crazy. I think we've just been moving pretty steadily. Um, Has Deshaun played yet? I don't. I don't believe so. But I'll have to check right now. Is he hurt? No, I don't know. Okay. I know y'all ain't gonna play Miles Garrett. No, probably not. No, to play I play. do know uh, our rookie offensive tackle, uh, Mike Hall. I think yep. is his name. He got he got charged with domestic abuse. Lord, what they Come doing, on, man? Play. What are you doing? <laughs> Give me your contract. I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> Tie me up. Yes, because that's crazy. You can't be doing that. I don't know. He, 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 he ain't even got his first check yet. He no. already losing money. No. Like, we need you, bro. We don't – I'm not saying we need him and, and like, I'm going to cry if he ends up going to prison. It is going to be upsetting. Yeah. Um, and a hit. <laughs> but just why – it's not hard to not behave. It's and, not hard to not behave. It's not hard not to be. It's, it's not hard not to behave. It's not hard well. to behave. And that's what you're trying to say. It's not hard to behave. It. It. That's another way you could say it. Yeah. I guess I could have chosen that way. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not hard to behave. Yeah. Not hard to behave. Man. Some people, it feels like it is. They can't get out their own way, right? Right. Oh, uh, Brandon Ayuk. Trade destination, man. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Well, if he gets traded, I, it's been pretty set in stone that he is being traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, think so? Uh, yeah, that's what everything's been saying. I mean, it's been going back and forth in between, like, the 49ers so- and the Steelers have a set in stone – deal made they're just ironing some things out but then it'll go back to Brandon Ayuk seems to be getting along well with the coaches and stuff so maybe he's staying so it's either he's staying or he's going but if he's going somewhere then it's going to be Pittsburgh I'm pretty sure of it so you he turned down 32 million a year yeah a lot of money from the Patriots yeah yeah just to not go to New England to be uh Russell Wilson's (laughs) Or Justin Number Fields. One receiver. Or Justin Fields. Or Justin Fields, yeah, because Russell Wilson is not guaranteed that job. Mm-mm. Like both of those quarterbacks, I would be if I was a if I was a top receiver or if I wanted to be a top receiver, I would try my best to stay away from both of them. Yeah. That's just honest. Yeah. Now the Patriots might not have any that are much better. Nothing better. Yeah, but I mean, I'll take the money. Yeah, I mean, you're going into a worse situation for you, but you're getting the bag. You get the bag, but well, you know you're they NFL player, so you're getting the bag regardless. But you, which yeah. bag is more comfortable to get? See, I'm, I'm an old, I'm an old Domino's player, and you know we used to say in Domino's, all money ain't good money. Yeah, so somewhere. In there, I'm sure Brandon Ayuk used that reference. Mm-hmm. Maybe there is a, a state income tax that's that'll make the money less in New England as mm. opposed to Pennsylvania. But you know, those things come into play. You know, I'm not. I don't. I don't know, but I, I imagine it could be. Or maybe he just felt that much about not wanting to play. Uh, in New England, as mm-hmm. opposed to in, in uh, Pennsylvania, I mean, New England has a black coach. Uh, you know, so it, I don't know what kind of relationship he had with Mayo, but Mayo, I guess, couldn't persuade him to take thirty-two million dollars. So, all right, I would feel real bad <laughs> about myself being a salesman. <laughs> If I can't persuade somebody to take thirty-two million a year, <laughs> you gotta be a real bad salesman, though. 
Yeah. To, to, That's got to not, but you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what did he say? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Pittsburgh is the answer, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, now let's check out Hassan Reddick holdout, man. Hassan Reddick. So do you do you understand what happened with the holdout? Um, as far as I'm aware, he was trying to get contractual a contract adjustment. Um and he just kept on waiting. And then they told him, you know, we're not going to do that. We're not hmm. adjusting your contract. No. They just flat out told him no. And he requested a trade because of it. Yeah. And then they said, hey, dude, we're not going to trade you either. And now it's just like. And this is uh, the Jets, right? Yes. The, the Jets organization. An organization that just, they ain't got shit right. Mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Let's just say that. It's true. I mean, so and it, it's like it don't matter who the head coach is, who the GM is, they just can't get right. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. why would you so if there is a guy who is adamant about getting a new deal you know, before he's traded and he says, you know, if I'm traded, I'm not playing until I get a new deal, like if you're the GM or the head coach, why not say, okay, let's negotiate a new deal before we trade for this guy? Because he, he yeah. might hold out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He might actually not play if we don't have a deal. Let's see what kind of money he's talking about before we trade for him. Because right. we might not be able to do that in the new deal. And I, I just don't think the Jets did any of that. And, and, and I think Hassan Reddick is, is, is going to hold out. And, and, you know, I don't know how strong their defense is without him, but, you know, he may or may not affect them a game here, a game there. But, uh, you know, as long as uh, Aaron uh, Rodgers doesn't get hurt, I feel like that they'll be fine. Like I would really be shocked if Aaron Rodgers was was, was healthy the entire year and he took a step back or his uh you know the offense wasn't that good. I'd be shocked. But uh they play on MetLife at MetLife Stadium. Yes. Yeah, they need to fix that field if they want oh, to save yeah. everybody. Aaron Rodgers. That's what right. I'd be more scared of. That was like, the field is what did that, right? Is what did it exactly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they, the field is what ruined your season last year. You're not gonna, you're not gonna change that in the in the off season. You'd think that that that'd have been my first decision. You get if I'm Hassan ready, I'm saying you gave this man all that money last year. He played four snaps. You can't give me a little bit of money. To yeah. play 16 games. You can't give me that a lot of that money yeah. for the whole season. He played mm -hmm. post snaps. Mm -hmm. 25 million, I think. This boy, this boy made uh six million a snap. Six million dollars a snap. That's wild. That's I crazy. That's why I was like, oh, wait, oh no, I'm I'm not giving in. Yeah. I give it in. You know. That's crazy. But, yeah, as soon as Aaron Rodgers uh, snapped his shit, I'd have been overhauling that field. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'd have been like, oh, hell no. Maybe this they just want to keep it because they're like, yeah, it injures some of our players, but it also injures the other the teams. Too. players, then that's, that's, that's janky too because now you, yeah. you're rooting for other players to get injured. Yeah. Oh, your whack ass feel? Yeah. 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 I, you know, I know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to our last topic. Last topic. Rookie, Rookie standouts. 
rookie standouts. Who's been standing out to you as uh, rookies and nationally? Nationally, uh, we can we can say who's your national standout. Um. Hmm. You told me. Uh, so you're not going to say JJ McCarthy? No, I'm not going to say JJ McCarthy. Okay. But you, I could say JJ McCarthy because he I played great. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He played great. Someone else playing great is who? Bo Nix. Okay. I get that. I like that. I love Bo Nix. Yeah, yeah. I even liked him in Auburn when he wasn't great. Did you? See, I, I did. I, I did. He was going against Andy. I didn't. But um, I'm – I'm thrilled that he is in the league and he is looking good. Good, good, good. I'm thrilled that Caleb Williams is looking good. So, thanks for stealing my thunder. My rookie standout so far is, is Caleb Williams. <laughs> my national standout. Uh-huh. Uh, again, I, I didn't think he would uh, – you know, I thought he'd be okay. I mm-hmm. thought he was – product of Lincoln Riley's offense and at Oklahoma they had really good records at USC his last year they weren't they 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 were seven to six it wasn't that it was not great that great yeah but uh he is doing his first game right this is the first mm-hmm. game uh, you know I know defenses will adjust but he did have a a, a nice first game mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. now locally for me locally is the Texans for you locally is your Cleveland Browns. Any standout rookies mm-hmm. for your Cleveland Browns? Mm-hmm. You you can you can go first this time. I went first and the last one. You got this one. Okay. Yeah. So the Texans have two standout rookies, in my opinion, and both of them are on the defensive side of the ball. Our cornerback from Georgia, Kamari Lasseter. Uh, you know. He was he was drugged through the mud by a lot of people because his 40 time was 4.6. They was like, oh, he's too slow. You know, Texas mm-hmm. drafted him uh second round. And he's been lights out. He's he has he had, he's been guarding everybody from Stefan Diggs to Tank Dale uh to Nico Collins. And the four six. It's either an anomaly, right? It's either it happened once and mm-hmm. he's really not a four six guy, or he yeah. plays a lot faster than four six, and that happens too. You can uh, run a certain uh, forty, but on the field you play a lot faster than that, and that's through reaction, instincts, knowing where the ball is going and being there before that type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And it's Kamari Lasser. Uh, has been lights out uh, as we and so far so much so as he's looking i think he leads for the uh, starting uh cornerback job opposite Derek Stingley and, and my second my second uh rookie standout for the Texans is uh Kalen uh uh Bullock from uh USC uh matter of fact he played with uh, Caden, uh, I think it is. But he played uh, on USC's defense, which was not a very good defense. Mm-hmm. And he was drafted in the fourth round, but he's been lights out as a safety. Yeah. Uh, definitely going to be in the rotation. And he might even be a starter. You know, that's how well he's been playing. So Kamari Lasseter and Caden Bullock. Well. Um, I think I don't necessarily have any standouts that are standing out to me right now. Um, mm-hmm. Someone I look forward to see more of, though, from the Cleveland Browns is our rookie wide receiver, Jamari Thrash is his name. Okay. Um, I know that in our game against the Packers, he caught three – for I want to say 40, 42 yards, I think three for 42. Wow, be more, uh, three for 43. 
Um, and that game was pretty boring. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Did not sit through it all. Uh -huh. I was bored. Okay. Um, who but passed the ball? Who passed the ball? Um, yeah. DTR. Okay. Dorian Thompson. Dorian Thompson. Robinson. Robinson. Threw a nice 22-yard okay. laser at him. That was pretty, pretty exciting, you know. Um, there were just a lot of small moments like that that I was like, oh, that looks good. That looks good. And I can't wait to see more of that. Do you remember what uh, round he was drafted in? Uh, the fifth or the fourth? Maybe. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so that's pretty. Uh, the fifth round, yeah. Middle, he was drafted in the fifth round. A late rounder that, that uh, had, a nice, had a nice game. Mm-hmm. Good, good, mm -hmm. good, good. Any other ones? Who job? Who job drafted the first round? We didn't have a first round pick. Who job drafted the second round? I don't remember. Okay. 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 But obviously he's not. He must not caught your attention. Whoever he was, or maybe y'all didn't have a second rounder either, because y'all still dealing with. No, I don't think we did. The ramifications of, of getting uh, Deshaun. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a lot of picks, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we drafted Mike Hall in, Ram in the second round. Yeah, that's right. Who was Mike Hall? The one that get, that got the domestic abuse charge. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Lord. So just like the Jets, y'all can't tackle. get out of y'all own way. Defensive tackle, not offensive tackle. Okay. Okay. Y'all, y'all struggling to get out of y'all own way. Yeah. <laughs> man, man. Okay, man. Well, uh, that's a bet, man. That's uh, a bet. And uh, that's a wrap, my my son. Uh, this has been fun. This it was fun. Time. I little closing statement. I promise I will come a lot more prepared next time. Yeah, and a yeah. lot and a lot less nervous, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's I'll what's write going. more down. Yep. Oh, just something I didn't mention earlier though that what's I did up? write down and wanted to bring up. Uh-huh. Uh this year the US became the first country to top three thousand total medals, Olympic medals. Wow. And okay. we brought home hundred and twenty six total medals this year. So in all the Olympics combined, we have over three thousand. Over three thousand. That's what's up. That's what's up. Man. I know that we tied with China in golds. Yep. But we 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 had more. They had like ninety one total, and we had one twenty six. So yeah. So we 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 just we another. Whooped, we whooped the dog out of it over another year of Olympic greatness <laughs> from the greatest country on planet Earth. So let me ask you this: What? What did you think about Snoop Dogg? Oh, carrying the torch? Yeah, no, yeah. So, yeah, so he did carry. What do you think about him carrying the torch? I think that's that's fantastic, man. So, I, I, so I know you've already said you didn't watch very much Olympics. Mm -hmm. I watched a lot, and they had Snoop Dogg was on everything. He had a different outfit on every day. Yeah, he was a commentator on different sports. He's he a was hilarious icon. the entire way through. He's a global icon. A global icon. Mm -hmm. he, he he came from murder was the case mm -hmm. to carry the torch at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali carried the torch at the Olympics. That's crazy. The greatest of them. Yeah, that's crazy. You got Snoop Dogg uh, doing that, man. And, and, and you know, just live. Lifting up uh, hip hop and, and and just letting people know that you that that you don't always have to to stay where you came from. You know what exactly. I'm saying? You can grow and and he's still married to his house. You know his high school sweetie and and you know raised a family for for you know kids with two parents under one roof and mm -hmm. you know and and man, I, the reason. The reason I'm so stoked is because I know where he came from. I've been yeah. following him a since he was, yeah, a, a since uh, he was uh, on deep cover. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? I've been following him. So that's why I'm really stoked about Tupac, man. And uh, did I say Tupac? You did. <laughs> I'm really stoked <laughs> about uh, Tupac, man. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That was, mm-hmm. that was really, you know, he was really uh, fun. And he'll be on uh, The Voice as a judge. Uh, and, and yeah, Snoop Dogg is doing it big, man. Mm-hmm. More old ladies know Snoop Dogg than probably Wayne Brady. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I saw uh, I saw one uh, interview where uh, somebody it might have been Jimmy Kimmel interviewing Snoop Dogg. Let me know if you saw this interview. He was like, Snoop, can you go anywhere without being noticed? And Snoop was like, man, well, it used to be this one spot I would go. He said, because he said nobody knew who he was. He said, it was like an Asian spot. He'd go get his meat out. He said, he had great meat. Mm-hmm. He said, about the, the second or third time he went, he said, <laughs> the owner came out the back with cameras everywhere, talking about, hey, it's you. I knew you was Snoop Dogg. <laughs> He's like, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> like, yeah, come on, man. He's like, yeah, no, nah, I can't go nowhere now. Mm. <laughs> One spot he thought he was anonymous. Man. Yeah, he, was, he can't go there no more. Yeah, man, but uh, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool to see, man. Uh, and I'm trying to think. Any other thoughts, man, on on the Olympics or you know what we talked about today? I don't believe so. All right, man. What about, uh, so. Did you, actually, I do have something. What's up? Did you watch any of the Olympic breakdancing? Oh. (laughs) So I read about it. Uh Uh-huh. I read that there would be breakdancing in the Olympics now, but I never saw it on TV, no. Well. I was asleep. I don't know. I watched. I heard about it originally. Yeah. Because of the Australian uh, representative uh, Ray Gun. Uh huh. I heard about it originally because of her performance, um, which was everybody else just looked like they were supposed to be there. She did. She didn't seem to me like she seemed out of place. You know. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I did watch uh, Logistics, which was one of the women from the U.S. that was there. Um, okay. Her match against uh, Nika is this B-girl from Lithuania, who I'm pretty sure she ended up taking silver in um, the break dancing. The Lithuanian woman did, yeah. So, so I'm thinking, tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. But I'm thinking, so it was sort of like gymnastics where they had like a difficulty level. No, it's like a break dance battle where they stand in front of each other on this big circle and then they play the music. And like once the person starts break dancing and they do their whole thing, and then the next person starts going and they do their whole thing and they're just breaking. Really? Mm hmm. It was actually pretty cool to watch. Of the, of the match that I watched on YouTube, it was yeah. it was pretty cool. That okay. And then to go from watching an actual match, well, I guess it was an actual match too. And I don't, I know that the I know Ray Gun has like a degree in cultural movement and stuff like that. Yep. But there's got to be. I was reading an article earlier where it was talking about how Australian. Uh, break dancers are like, like up, oh, like they're super upset about Ray Gun's performance, and they talk about how that does not appropriately represent <laughs> break dancing culture back in the <laughs> And they're like, like it's a big deal for them, pa- far past the memes. It's like, how are we supposed to get sponsorships yeah. and grants and stuff now when yeah. that's our global representation? Wow. That's what people have to look at when they see when you type in on Google Australian breakdancing. That's oh, what pops up. That is so funny. Like you, 
maybe I'm just being too harsh about it, but you did your country a disservice. Yeah. By getting up there and just embarrassing yourself. Totally, totally. Like <laughs> you could have thought that you were the person for the job, but we all saw the same thing. Yep. When you go back and you look at the tape, we're looking at the same performance right here. That's yep. not yep. I'm the best break dancer in my country performance. That's <laughs> I just want to be in the Olympics because it's cool. Right, right, right. Exactly. You know, and I think it was the first installment, the first Olympics for breaking. I think I think oh, it'll, yeah. only, it'll only get better and it'll probably have to get more regulated. Yeah. But then once it does that, it'll 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 get better. Yeah. yeah. Another thing is it won't it will not be returning for the twenty twenty eight Los Angeles Olympics. They already said that? Yeah, as of right now, it will not be returning. <laughs> Probably do. Probably this is not this is my opinion. Probably due to Ray Gunn and her shenanigans. But I also think her being able to become the representative um, is another reason they're probably removing it for now, just so you can get better like qualifying competition. Yep. To be the representative of your country in it. Yeah. Because it seems like they it was kind of kind of a mess to get there yeah this year <laughs> but wow that's crazy uh i mean you know uh, i thought uh i thought it was uh a, you know a stretch to add flag football to the olympics how did that go this year i didn't hear nothing about it neither did i yeah so i'm i'm Maybe it's gonna start in 2028. Maybe I, I, I didn't hear anything about anybody with no gold, silver, brown, nothing with the flag. But uh, yeah, but they're they, they are adding it, but uh they're gonna have to work the kinks out. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're adding baseball and flag football to the 2028 Olympics. Okay, baseball as well. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is, you know. I mean, but baseball is America's, you know, it's, a, it's it's America's pastime. So, you know, it's a summer sport originally. So yeah. it, it's not going to feel out of place. Mm -mm. It's going to feel sort of like basketball, you know. But, a lot of countries are probably really good at baseball too. Like oh, maybe America. a lot of Central Central America countries. Yeah, maybe. I'm trying to tell you. Central America, South mm -hmm. America, South mm -hmm. of even, North America. <laughs> even Asia. AB is it. Yeah, Asia too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 good at that baseball. Mm -hmm. they, they they you know they they pick a sport that they can compete and then they dominate. Yeah, a lot of things to look forward to. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. All right, people. Uh, well, this has been fun. Yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah, man. Our first episode, episode one. Uh, of the Like Father, Like Son Sports Podcast. What's your name again? Tyler. My name's Tyler A. Sims. Tyler A. My Sims. My father. <laughs> and Eric T. Jackson, man. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, growing and bonding uh, through sports and, uh, and, and life, man. Uh, we we're gonna do this probably every week, and mm -hmm. uh, just just gonna see where it takes us, man. Yeah, uh, appreciate you, Tyler. Yes, of course. And uh, and and you know, I look forward to next week. righty. yes, sir. See you later, man. See you later. Uh, love you, player. Love you too. All right, man. <laughs>